Do you agree with this statement? In areas of your life where you practice to get better, you want to do it in a way where you get the most efficient use of time, where you're having the biggest impact and creating long-term sustainable change in the areas you're trying to grow. And if you agree with this statement, in the areas where you're trying to practice, are you actually hitting the objective of that statement? Today I want to share a massive shift that I had in my practice in an important area of my life and how that's fast forwarded my progress and my long term change in ways I never thought possible. So for many of us, we have areas of our lives where we're trying to grow, and it can be a hobby thing, it can be a, a health thing, it can be a career thing, there's, you know, there's just things in our areas in our life that we ultimately want to grow in. And sometimes what we do in these areas is we devote time in our life to improve at these things. And for me, you guys know, a lot of you guys will know me from fitness, but if you've heard me talk in the past, one of my other passions in life is music. And I'm really good at putting the time in my life to practice playing music. In most weeks of my life, I'm gonna spend about anywhere from three to six hours playing my piano. I absolutely love it. And I've, for years and years and years, I've put this practice time in. I'm not the kid who, you know, the, the, the tutor would say, go home and do the work and didn't do the work and turn up to the next lesson the next week. I would turn up to the next lesson the week and have done the work. And for the longest time, my approach to practice was just the time that I spent practicing. So it was literally just, you know, today I did an hour's practice, or I did 30 minutes on my piano, and to me it was the time I spent practicing was success. And then after a while I started to do some deeper learning around how do I get the most out of my practice time? Because when I started to reflect upon the use of my practice time, ultimately I realized it wasn't the most effective use of that time. Like when you think about yourself and the areas where you're trying to improve, the first question I'm going to throw at you is, are you actually practicing at getting better? Like, are you trying to actually improve in that area? And if so, what is the strategy that you're using to get better in that area? Are you, A, the person who kind of says I'm going to practice but never actually practices? Or if you are the person who practices, are you actually kind of making the progress that you ultimately want to make in this area? And after doing some learning with my own practice, I learned a way of approaching practice which really shifted everything that I did. And there was two key concepts to it. It was, first of all, learning and practicing. Learning and practicing. So when I look at the way I spend my time on the piano nowadays, one thing I'll do at the beginning of a week is I'll do my assessment around what am I trying to learn this week. So in every session there'll be a bit of time where I'm trying to focus on a learning aspect of the piano. Now the thing about the piano is it's, it's a hard skill to develop because there's kind of like 20 aspects you need to work on to become a, a good pianist. There's, the sight reading, there's, there's ear training, there's the skill of learning songs, there's creativity, there's this massive list of, there's the, um, the theory, there's this massive list of skills that you need to develop to become a great pianist overall. And when I used to sit down to practice, I'd, I'd, I'd have this thing in front of me, it might be I'm trying to learn a song, or it might be I'm just doing some scales, but I didn't really think about what am I trying to learn today. And I think this is one of the most important things when you have a practice routine in your life is to identify the objective and the thing you're trying to learn today or over a period of time. So like for me, I like to do it like in week blocks. So what's the thing I'm trying to learn this week? Then what you want to do is as you're identifying what you want to learn, you want to spend some time within your practice session going, focusing on learning that thing. So let's just say, for example, I'll just take it really basically. I'm just going to learn a new scale on the piano. So I want to learn a scale that maybe I've never learned before and it's maybe a little bit technical for me. So what I've got to learn is what's the key to understanding the scale? It might be my finger placement. It might be the way I work through the scale. It might be learning a new key signature or something like this. I'm, I'm spending time in my session doing the learning. And ultimately what I'll do over a period of time, I want to cement that learning in place. But once I've done the learning aspect of my practice time, then I practice the learning that I've done. So then what I might do is I might put my metronome on at a slow pace, spend time on one hand on that scale, spend time on another hand on that scale and work through that time. And to me, this shift in from being someone who's just practicing with, without an understanding of what I'm trying to learn each session has to becoming someone who now spends time on focusing on what I'm trying to learn and then practicing that learning thing today 
has massively shifted the progress I'm having in my piano. And not just the progress, but the ability to sustain the learning and cement the learning in the foundation of what I'm of my growth of my piano playing. And this is an approach I want you to think about in your own practice. So what's the area of your life where you're trying to get better? And first of all, how much time are you devoting to that area? So there's probably a few questions to right here. Are you actually getting better? Are you actually putting any time into it? It's the first question. Because some people say, oh, you know, let's even just use the weight loss journey. The weight loss journey is a really interesting one because people say, oh, I want to lose weight. Well, how much time are you actually committing to losing weight in your journey. And if we think of the aspects of weight, it's a bit like, it's a bit like the piano, isn't it? Well, there's the nutrition, there's the habits, there's the, the mindsets, there's the psychology of how to deal with eating when you're in a tough place. So there's lots of things that you need to learn. So the first thing is, how much time are you putting into this area of your life? And then when you think about the moments where you've got to practice your nutrition, have you thought about what am I trying to learn today? Like for example, if you were just to say to yourself, I'm trying to learn how to have a healthy, well-portioned lunch. What would you need to learn and then what would you need to practice? So the learning might go, I don't know nothing about nutrition, so I need to do some learning around A, right types of food and the volume of food that I want to have. And then once you've thought about that, you might think, well, I want to also learn the routine that I need to put in place. And then each day when you hit that lunchtime, you're trying to practice the things that you're trying to learn. And then as you evolve your weight loss journey, you're expanding these things out. And that's why I love this approach. Practice time isn't just practice. It's not just random practice. It's understanding where my learning needs to be, identifying the learning I need to have, to figuring out actually how to learn the thing, <laughs> like me learning the scales or you learning nutrition, if it's a weight loss journey, and then practicing that thing until you feel competent in that area. And then what you do is you expand that out moving forward. Do you think about yourself in the areas where you're trying to improve? If you had this approach, would you be way more successful? And it's actually a really good thing to think about in areas where you deep down have just got into the habit. And exercise is a really good example of this because exercise is that thing that a lot of people just turn up and do day in, day out. And it's a really good routine, but they're not really improving. Whereas if they were to say to themselves, I'm going to learn about how to do better squats or about my running technique or about a dance move. And I'm going to practice it as a part of my practice when I'm training. You're going to get better at that thing. So ultimately, what I want you to do is I want you to reflect upon the area of your life where you're trying to create change and think about how much time you're spending on the learning and then how much time you're practicing the learning that's going to cement the change that you want. I guarantee that if you can do this well, you're going to fast forward your growth and cement it for the long term in the most powerful way possible. If you enjoy my videos and you're not exercising or you know somebody in your life who really struggles with exercise, I've got to recommend my new book, I Will Make You Passionate About Exercise. The purpose of this book is to take those who struggle with exercise from where they are to cementing the foundation that creates a lifetime love of exercise. It has all the steps, it has a plan, it has a journey that you go through that safely and wisely guides you to bringing exercise in your life in the most successful way possible. To get the book, go to www.passionaboutexercise.com. It will be the best thing you can do for your health and fitness. Get the book right now and you'll be seeing massive change in your health and fitness in a very short period of time.